Hi, this is just a quick preview of the skeleton mesh generator for live link subjects that I've been working on. Uh, I'm going to show it in a little example scene right here where we have some take data already loaded. Now we've importantly captured some live link data in a previous sequence of take. If you're doing this with actual live live link data, that's great. Uh, and make sure that you've at least played the scene a little bit first. And that loads up the virtual subjects. All right, so we want to go to our asset browser. And for the moment, uh, if we want to open a plugin, I'm going to change this, but we have to go to Project Plugins, find the Skeleton Generator Content Folder, go to Widgets, and right-click on the blue Scale Mesh from Live Link widget, and go run Editor Utility Widget. Uh, I have already docked this over to the side here. Now, if you've played the sequencer already, we're going to go into the drop-down of Subjects and choose the subject we want to create a skeleton for. In this case, I'm going to choose Oberon. By default, the path will go to game characters and set this to whatever you like. Joint size and bone size are some sensible defaults I've set. You can tweak this as needed and click Create Skeletal Mesh. Now, once we've done that, if we go back to our asset browser, we go to our path. We should have uh, a skeletal mesh and a skeleton that has now been created with a prefix S underscore for the skeleton. Uh, ignore this. This is something I've created myself. So, once you open it, you're going to get an error saying the preview doesn't uh, match the skeleton anymore. Just go yes. And then if we pull out, we can see our skeleton. So, it, regardless of the pose your live link data will be making, so in this case you can see our character here, uh, Oberon is this character here with the bin with the arms. You can see his arms are actually sort of posed inwards, yet we now have a lovely T-pose for our live link character. So everything is all nicely positioned and scaled, all the bones are at the right locations with all the rotations zeroed out. Now, if we want to go ahead and make it a little bit prettier, we can add two material slots. And we can go ahead and add these. I was looking for a way to automate this, but it's a little, it's a little tricky. Uh, but for the moment, we can just create two material slots and we can just put whatever we want in. And I'm just going to save that. Now, uh, if we go ahead and grab the bones, you can actually see that at the moment there's no skin weights set. Again, something else I want to automate. But a couple of clicks, we can fix it. We want to go Modeling Tools. We're going to go to Skin, Start Skin Weights Binding Tool. Going to leave it on the current bone as sort of root and leave direct distance. Stiffness, we're going to set to 1, and the max influences, we're going to set to 1 as well. So every vertice is going to try to snap to the closest bone. And we're going to hit accept and now once we've done that if i go ahead and close out of the modeling tools you can see that it's automatically applied skin weights don't forget to save your skeleton and yeah let's just go ahead and drag this guy out to the level and what we need to do now i'm just going to ignore this do, 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 do. So we're going to go ahead to our skeletal mesh, and this is all pretty standard if you've done this before. We're going to go and create an anim blueprint for our skeleton. I'm going to fire that open. And I'm going to create a very quick live link pose node. I'm going to plug that in, and we're going to set that to the same subject that we used to create our skeleton with. Now I'm just going to go ahead and save that, close that. And on the skeletal mesh that I've dragged out here, uh, it's just a actor with a skeletal mesh component on it by default. So we're just going to go ahead and set our generated animation blueprint. And we're also going to add a live link skeletal animation component, like so. Ooh, where's he gone? There he is. And there we go. Go ahead and play this. Unreal is speeding. Are you recording? There we go, hit the audio. And there we go. Yeah, so this is now a skeletal mesh asset that has been created exactly from the dimensions of the input live link data. So if you don't have a skeletal mesh asset because you've, say, exported it from Motive or something and you don't have something to actually apply, um, you can just apply this straight into Unreal now, and that means. Uh, hopefully reduction of anything like foot sliding because you have a character that's pretty much exactly the right size. The next steps would be basically taking this character and using Unreal's new IK rig and retargeting system to retarget it onto the new character. But this skeleton would be basically our input, our source character that we would be using. 
a couple of bugs. Yes, I know there's some things such as it is sort of disappearing at times. Um, something to do with the LODs or the occlusion baked into the mesh, which is going to be in a future version fix. But for the moment, it works pretty well.